Hi everyone, I'm just chuckling to myself because as the week's gone on, <laughs> I started um, like putting my makeup on and doing my hair. And then the other day I casually mentioned I have my pyjamas on and now I'm just full on um, in my dressing gown. Um, <laughs> tomorrow I'll have a onesie on. <laughs> Um, good evening anyway, I hope you're enjoying this little mini series. Um, tomorrow, well my March hypnobirthers had two face-to-face -face sessions with me and the third session was when all this crap started um, going on. So I cancelled their last session, not cancelled it, I postponed it because I just didn't think it was a good idea. Three pregnant women and their partners. Um, wasn't a good idea so we all mutually agreed to postpone it and they've agreed to be my guinea pigs for my first virtual is that the right word um course hi whoever's there um they're gonna be my guinea pigs they know I've called them that um I've never done um hypnobirthing like this with a group of people before so we're gonna use zoom they're gonna let me try it out on them and I feel okay with that because they've already met me and I feel comfortable with them and then tomorrow I'm probably going to launch some virtual um, hypnobirthing with new people. I'm going to do it at a really good price. I've been thinking about this. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to do it at a good price. Um, probably three sessions, about two hours each with some stuff emailed to you. My courses involve loads of visuals. Um, because on the day that you're, look at my hair, that's appalling, don't, no judgment please, um, on the day when you're in labour you don't want to be like looking back at notes or trying to remember what I taught you, you just want something right there in front of you that you're like, ah oh, right yeah we're doing that now. Um, so I'll send you loads of visuals and you can just put them all out in front of you so if you want in more than what I'm doing here, um, more support, more information, more like practical tools and stuff. I can see a little picture there, but I'm, I think it might be Emma. Is that you, Emma? Um, yeah, there's, that's going to be hopefully launched tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to test run it on my um, existing March hypnobirthers. Um, so active labour, okay. It's called active labour, it's called established labour, some people call it the upstage of labour. I, I recognise your picture, Emma, I knew that was your children. Um, yeah, active labour, established labour, the upstage of labour for reasons that we'll talk about. Medically, it's called the first stage of labour, which um, I don't buy into at all. I've got loads of messages, hold on. Um, because so much has happened already and if you're told that this is the first stage of labour you're going to be like what was all that that I've just done um so it's just not factually correct and and all the stages of labour are labour whether you're in early labour established labour giving birth it's all labour you've got to go through all those stages there's no rush to get through them so in established labour what's happening is that the surges are now going to start opening your cervix more and more and it takes us to get through the latent phase of labour early labour hi danielle um into this established active stage of labour before any significant opening of your cervix goes on and that is perfectly normal that is perfectly normal and how it works again imagine my hands are your uterus my wrists are your cervix as well as having a surge where all the muscles start to tighten and then relax back down do you remember that picture i think i need to do it backwards don't i that way um yeah, as well as that happening, what also happens is every single muscle fibre, thank you, Danielle, um, starts to draw up. So every time you have a surge, your uterine muscles draw up a tiny, tiny fraction of a millimetre each time. And if you watch what happens to my wrists over time, they start opening, they start opening. That's how your cervix opens. The uterus draws it up so it doesn't like open it gets drawn up okay um, and we'll talk about the reasons why it's getting drawn up 
on the birthing stage video that I do um, either tomorrow or the day after. Now, a significant thing with established labour is the surges are much, much more predictable than they've ever been so far. So whether that's, yeah, they're usually, I don't like timescales, but they're usually about every three to four minutes, okay? So you'd have roughly a three to four minute gap, maybe four minutes at the beginning of this stage. Um, three minutes at the end of this stage um, but everybody's different um, and about a one minute surge okay so you've got that kind of you know when you're you're roughly due one because that same amount of time has gone by they're all evening out in terms of how long they're lasting so in established labor about a full minute from start to finish. I need to do it that way. I watched one of my videos the other day and my wave was going the wrong way. Um, from start to finish, remembering that most of the surge is the build up and the come down and only a tiny part of the surge is the peak at the top when the uterus is at its tightest. So that predictability that they're coming with almost certainty every few minutes um, will tell you that more than likely you're in established labour. Women were in the early phase of labour that I was talking about last night, where women are quite quiet in early labour. In established labour, they start making more and more noise. Lots of people think hypnobirthing is about being quiet. It's not. If you're quiet, you're quiet. But if you want to go for it with your voice, then go for it. It's really helpful making a lot of noise, actually. It's gr women might start really, you know, purposefully breathing and you can really hear those breaths being drawn in and then released. Grunting, groaning, moaning, roaring, mooing. It's all totally allowed on a Lionheart hypnobirthing course. That's why we're called Lionheart. Um, unleashing your power through your voice. It's very, very comforting to make noise in labour. To just kind of, it's like a really good energy release. Women left to their own instincts will move around a lot in labour, which is why I don't want anyone on a bed at all ever moving around in labour is very comforting and women will rock back and forth they'll sway their hips they'll wiggle they'll circle their hips they might do like big gigantic steps kind of thing they might shake like tap their leg and their feet on the floor lots and lots of movement um in established labour so yeah those predictability of the surges coming regularly um every few minutes lasting about a minute each one um all evening out in terms of strength and you have to stop and concentrate when they come um you know being really focused on your breathing keeping your body relaxed and then the noises <laughs> pretty pretty definitive that somebody has moved along in labor when you're grunting groaning moaning um, you weren't doing that at the start, so it's pretty definitive that you have progressed in labour. Your behaviour is totally different than what it was at the start and moving around a lot more, swinging, circling those hips, rocking back and forth, stuff like that. Now, if somebody was to vaginally examine you in labour, and I say if... Um, because you don't have to be examined in labour. I, I won't have time to go through this on, on this little mini-series, but we will um, if you want to do a course with me. Um, there's lots of other ways, basically, of assessing labour, mostly looking at your behaviour. Um, at the start of this active, established stage of labour, someone would be about four centimetres dilated, so the cervix would be four centimetres open. And at the end of the active stage of labour, somebody would be about nine centimetres open. So this is the stage when your body is opening more and more and more. No time scales because labour, as long as mum's okay and baby's okay, it really does take as, as long as it takes. Um, and tomorrow, I don't know if I'll um, put them both together. Um, I might I'll do transition tomorrow. Um, that's that stage of labour transition, and I might add into it the down stage of labour, the birthing stage. Um, and then on Friday we'll go through birth of the placenta because everybody forgets that <laughs> when you've got your baby, you've got um a placenta to give birth to as well. 
Um, and just if you are remotely interested in doing a hypnobirthing course with me, um, like this, like in a, so there'd be, I don't know how many, um, a small group watching and I will be, um, talking like this and you can ask me questions direct. Um, I'm going to release some dates hopefully in the morning. Um, yeah. And just let me know. Just let me know if you're interested. All right. If you like that video, just press the little like button and then I know that it's, I'm doing what people want me to do. Um, ask me any questions. Um, have a fabulous night, everybody. Bye-bye.